As we dive into wireless local area networks, we need to describe the threats to our wireless LANs. And to get started, a wireless LAN is pretty much open to anyone within a range of an access point. And if they have the appropriate credentials to associate with that access point, they are on the network. Now, these attacks, they can be generated by outsiders, disgruntled employees, even unintentionally by employees inside of your company. And they don't even have to physically enter the workplace to gain access to the wireless local area network. There's many different types of wireless attacks that can happen, one of them being interception of data. Your wireless data, it should be encrypted at all times to prevent it from being read by eavesdroppers, people who shouldn't have access to that data. Wireless intruders are unauthorized users that are attempting to access network resources, and you know what? They can be deterred by using authentication. Denial of service attacker is a little more difficult. They try to access your wireless local area network services and compromise them either accidentally or on purpose. We also have our rogue APs, which are unauthorized access points that are installed by either a well-intentioned user, someone just wanted to have an extra wireless network close by, or installed for malicious purposes, and they want to be able to intercept people's traffic. Using management software, we should be able to detect those rogue access points. How do denial of service attacks happen on wireless? Well, they can happen because of things like improperly configured devices. Configuration errors can disable a wireless network. For instance, an administrator, they could accidentally disable the network with a disable button. Or even an intruder with administrator privileges could intentionally disable the wireless local area network. Now, another DOS attack is where a malicious user intentionally interferes with the wireless communication. What that means is a malicious user has a goal. And their goal is to overwhelm the wireless access point to such a point where no legitimate devices can access it. There's tools for mobile devices for this, as well as specific radio frequency blocking tools. Accidental interference, we all know it can happen. Our wireless local area networks, they're prone to interference from other wireless devices. And these devices can be things like microwave ovens, baby monitors, cordless phones, and even more. The 2.4 gigahertz radio frequency, that is the most prone wireless band for interference. So how do we minimize this risk to denial of service? Well, we're going to harden our devices and keep our passwords secure. We're going to use backups in order to come back online as fast as possible. And also, any changes that we're rolling out on our network, they should always be done off hours, not during a production environment time frame. A lot of this interference that can happen, as mentioned, is on the 2.4 gigahertz band. So let's move our devices to the 5 gigahertz band if it's possible. Rogue access points are the detriment of wired network security. A rogue access point is an access point or wireless router that has been connected to a corporate network without the explicit authorization of the company. This is completely against company policy. Anyone with access to the physical premises can install a very inexpensive wireless router or access point and allow themselves access to the secure wired network resource. Once connected, these rogue APs can be used by an attacker to capture MAC addresses, to capture data packets, and even to gain access to wired network resources. They can be used to launch man-in-the-middle attacks as well. To prevent the installation of these rogue access points, organizations have to configure wireless LAN controllers with rogue AP policies, as well as they should use monitoring software to actively monitor the radio spectrum for unauthorized access points. With a man-in-the-middle attack, a hacker is going to position themselves between two legitimate entities in order to either read or modify the data that passes between those two entities. Now, there's many ways that a man-in-the-middle attack can be created. A popular way is to use the evil twin access point attack. And this is where an attacker is going to introduce a rogue access point. They're going to configure the rogue access point with the same wireless SSID as a legitimate real access point nearby. Locations offering free Wi-Fi, such as some coffee shops and airports and restaurants, they're popular spots for this type of attack to occur because they usually have open authentication. With open authentication, a password is not needed when you're going to access the wireless network. Now, connecting wireless networks would see two access points offering wireless access. The people near the rogue access point would find the stronger signal and probably connect with it. Once that user traffic is sent through the rogue access point, that data is captured, and then it's usually forwarded to the legitimate access point. 
the traffic returning back from that legitimate access point will then be sent backwards to the rogue access point. It is going to be captured by the malicious user and forwarded out to that poor unsuspecting user. This allows the attackers to steal user passwords, to grab personal info, and to even gain access to the user's device. Defeating these man-in-the-middle attacks depends on the sophistication of your wireless local area network infrastructure and also the vigilance that you use to monitor activity on those wireless local area networks. It all starts with identifying legitimate devices on the network. And after you have legitimate devices being known, the network can be monitored for anything that looks abnormal.